A Friday night at Wyandotte Park interrupted by gunshots sending two people to the hospital. Hello everyone, I'm Connie Leonard in for Doug Profit tonight. Police say they responded to the park around 7 o'clock this evening. Officers found one man shot near the basketball courts. About 15 minutes later, a second person arrived at the hospital with a gunshot wound to the shoulder. Police say both people are expected to survive. Anyone with information is encouraged to call the anonymous tip line. That number 574 LMPD. That shooting is just the latest for the city as it continues to try and address violent crime. Data from Louisville's gun violence dashboard shows teens and young adults make up most of the victims of gun violence. In 2024, there have been 98 shooting incidents in the Derby City. Nearly 28% of victims of those shootings are 18 to 24 years old. WHAS 11 night team's Connor Steffen shows how one group has been working with the city's youth to combat that violence. As Youth Violence Prevention Week comes to a close with an event at Baxter Avenue Theater. There's a week geared towards increasing awareness. 15 minutes south, crime scene tape wraps itself around this basketball court and structure at Wyandotte Park. Police say the shooting left two people hurt. It's the latest tragedy bringing a necessary conversation to the forefront. I think Louisville um, definitely sees trends. Um, and is able to be aware of said trends through the activations that you've seen. Recent trends tell us Louisville is seeing a decline in the number of young shooting victims year over year, but still the age group makes up a majority of shooting victims. But I do know youth violence is an issue, and that's what makes National Youth Violence Prevention Week such an important thing because it does happen. Between 2020 and 2023, more than 1,100 people under the age of 25 were victims of gun violence. This past year's numbers are the lowest the city has seen in at least five years. I think I think one of the biggest um, issues that we have is the trickle effect that trauma has on the community um, at the bare bones. Taking aim at the issue is at the heart of what the Office of Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods Metro Youth Cabinet does. And I think that's overall the goal, to build strong children, to develop strong, strong citizens within our community. All this week, the cabinet has hosted events offering an outlet to discuss youth gun violence in the city and promote solutions. All created to increase communities capacity to work with young people and families in the community. Taking small steps toward reimagining a city without gun violence currently crippled by it. In Louisville, Connor Steffen, the WHAS 1119 on your side. And to find out more information on all the resources the Office of Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods has to offer, head to our website, whas11.com. With just 53 days to the primary election, Metro Council candidates are sharing their plans with the community. Tonight, candidates in Districts 4 and 6 were invited to a forum hosted by the National Action Network. The night teams, Taylor Woods and photojournalist Aspen Hester, attended the forum. So, Taylor, what were some of the topics discussed? Well, Connie, there were a lot of important topics, but some of the main ones were how candidates are going to address public safety and living conditions within Louisville Metro Housing Authority and their neighborhoods. With Metro Council member Jacoy Arthur not running for re-election, several candidates are now vying for his seat. District 4 covers downtown to West Louisville. Friday night, the National Action Network asked eight candidates how they would address issues like the housing crisis and living conditions at Dosker Manor and Park Duval. We need to sit and hold HUD responsible. The next person we have to hold responsible are the administrators of these properties. Candidates all said they're willing to work with Louisville Metro Housing Authority's new executive director, Elizabeth Strogen. But for some, that includes creating a plan to fix housing. You make sure that that is an honest assessment because it's the only way we can find out the exact problems, how they happened, who's responsible. Public safety and violence, specifically in the downtown area, has been a concern among many. Candidates share how they would work with Louisville Metro Police and the city's most recent consent decree. The DOJ brought to attention what we already knew. <laughs> what we need to do is take action on that. But in order to have fair policing, candidates explain it starts with adequate funding and resources. And you have to understand what's going on within that district and make sure our police officers are doing the right thing, have the proper equipment, 
have the correct leadership in place. Three candidates are running for Metro Council District 6, including Councilman Philip Baker, who already holds the seat. In order to bridge distrust with police, candidate Kate Holmes said the community needs to have input on the consent decree. Uh, it's extremely important to continue to push uh, for community involvement. What we need to do is to have a police department that understands they serve the people of Louisville, not the other way around. And all of the candidates in the two districts were invited to participate, but due to a conflict, Philip Baker was represented by a member from his office. And again, the primary election is on Tuesday, May 21st. In Studio Taylor Woods, WHAS 1119 on your side. Taylor, thank you. Well, Mayor Craig Greenberg is celebrating more than $600 million in funds coming to Louisville from the newly passed state budget. Lawmakers in the House and Senate sent the two-year budget to the governor's desk last night before the veto recess. The budget includes increases in funds for public schools, money to pay down the state's pension plans, and investments into various projects throughout Louisville. $100 million is headed to downtown for revitalization efforts. Meanwhile, over $400 million is heading directly to the University of Louisville for community outreach projects, including construction on the LUMED district. And Mayor Greenberg's Thrive by Five Universal Pre-K program is also set to receive more than $400,000. State lawmakers also passed a bill directly targeting Louisville and its politics. The bill would require all elections to be nonpartisan, including mayor and metro council. The bill also looks to make it easier for neighborhoods to form their own cities within Louisville. It also changes the process for complaints about LMPD officers, allowing the accused officers to have a pre-disciplinary hearing. Governor Bashir was asked about the bill yesterday and called it a targeted attack on the city. We want partisan school board elections, but nonpartisan Louisville mayor elections. Uh, these, are, these are partisan bills and attacks on the autonomy of the city of Louisville and its ability to govern itself the same way that any other city or county does. The bill is now on the governor's desk awaiting his signature or veto. JCPS parents are responding after the Kentucky legislature signed off on creating a task force to study the size of the district and how it operates. The task force will be made up of lawmakers, educators, and members of the public. It will look at needed changes in the district, including the possibility of splitting it up. One mother we spoke with says she hopes the task force can address concerns parents have had with the district. What is going on here? Because what I'm seeing is they are way too comfortable, the JCPS administration, in dropping 14,000 students off and without transportation on how to get to the better schools within the system, traditional magnet. Well, in response to the new task force, JCPS said, quote, this will facilitate greater local community and stakeholder participation and input, and it will also help task force members see for themselves the great teaching, learning, and support for families happening every single school day in JCPS schools. Nearly a year after a gunman opened fire at Old National Bank in downtown Louisville, the ATF has finished its investigation into the mass shooting. The April 10th shooting left five people dead and several others injured. In a statement, the ATF said their investigation was consistent with LMPD's. LMPD's 64-page report was released in November and found the shooter kept daily notebooks about his unhappiness with his job direction, society, and political issues. The ATF also confirmed the agency destroyed the gun used in the shooting earlier this year. Louisville Metro Police joined family and friends of fallen officer Nick Rodman today for a memorial service. Rodman died, you may remember, in the line of duty seven years ago. Today, after a crash during a pursuit, he... he uh, excuse me, he was 30 years old and left behind a wife and two children. Today's service was at Cave Hill Cemetery. Nick's brother is also on the force. Lieutenant Andrew Rodman spoke about his brother's legacy. I always idolized Nick and the lessons he taught me as we went through life together. However, the true lessons I learned from him are from the impact he had on other people's lives. He taught me to be kind, selfless, 
and to take the road less traveled. Rodman was responding to a domestic situation back in 2017 when his car was hit by Nathaniel Woods. Woods was under the influence of alcohol and drugs and sped through a red light. He was sentenced to 35 years in prison one year later.